I removed every single player in any of the English leagues who are over the age of 21. I then gave every single team a transfer ban and I simulated to see who has the best academies in the country on Football Manager. So I did this using the pre-game editor and I was so intrigued with how the first 10 years ended up that I may have simulated another 50 years. In fact, I definitely simulated another 50 years. So stick around to see how that turned out. Transfer banned for 60 years, only relying on the youth academy. Some, some amazing things happened. So this is the end of the first season. Now, one season in, Chelsea have topped the league. I'm not too surprised by that. There's a few surprises. Maybe Wolves coming in there in fourth place. Man United in fifth on the way down. Not really too many surprises. Wolves also managed to win the FA Cup. So they've had a fantastic season winning Champions League football and winning themselves a trophy. Now, being that the rest of the world had all of their usual players, Real Madrid won the Champions League, beating Barcelona in extra time. However, the furthest performing team from England was a Chelsea side, again, who won the league, of course, knocked out by Bayern Munich in the quarterfinals. Now, the Premier League, the awards was actually won a lot by Kai Havertz. As we can see, every single one, he basically won the young player, the best player, and the player's player. He's had a great season for the Champions champions Chelsea but given that we also removed all of the over 21 players in the rest of the league this is how they end up quite a similar looking championship there league one was won by Hull City league two was won by South End. Also, I bet you one like button press that I can show you the most ridiculous end of the season, the most shocking Premier League performance ever in front of your own eyes, and you will not expect it. One like button press. Just make sure you stick around so you do not miss it. I promise you it'll be worth your time. Also, 500 likes and we'll do another experiment video. So let's make the jump 10 years into the future, 10 seasons in, and see who coped best with the transfer ban. Who managed to keep their under-21s the longest and nourish them into the best players that they could possibly be. And so the year is 2030. This is 10 seasons in now. Manchester United have won the league. It hasn't all been uh, sunshine and roses for Manchester United because Manchester City has also dominated a long period of time as well, winning four trophies in five years. United getting another one there. Chelsea picking up another two. So we can see some fam familiar names. Liam Delap, of course at Manchester City we know is a phenomenal player really benefited from having no other players at Manchester City Kai Havertz is still there being the legendary forward at 30 years of age Chelsea have relied on him for a very long time we can see another a number of names here Phil Foden being one of them Manchester City have managed to keep hold of their players and now we have an influx of regens coming through to this man being one of the highlights the FA Cup has been won by pretty much a lot of the big six other than the first two years where it was Wolves and Leicester but the Champions League however has not been touched anywhere near by an English side completely out of the loop no one even finished runners up and that is probably because they can't make any foreign signings again though we look at the Premier League awards and Kai Havertz has his name splashed around everywhere with a little bit of sprinkle of some Phil Foden too may I interest you in some Phil Foden said the Premier League the players player a lot of it again was these two men the Young player of the year, this is where we start to see some new names come forward. Phil Foden, Gabriel Martinelli. I'm sure Arsenal fans are really hoping that this guy comes into a great promise. Uh, he is playing for Barcelona, though, at this point of his career. Then we start to see the regens. Jay Stanfield picking up a good win there for Fulham, who actually finished the Champions League spot in fourth place. Scott Parker hold that for. We have, of course, Isaac Hansen Aaron from the Manchester United team, and this is where the regions come in. Devon Smith, we have Simon Shuttleworth, who we've already looked at, and now Felix Baker, the Manchester United forward, who is just 20 years of age. He looks amazing. This is how the championship looks. It has a few Premier League teams of now in there. 
dotted around. Skybet League 1 looks like this. Again, not much has changed yet. My team there, Plymouth Argyle, getting relegated by losing so many games. That is ridiculous. And Skybet League 2, the league that they're going in, looks just like this. Some big teams down there, the likes of Swindon, Peterborough, or teams who I thought might have benefited from this experiment. The likes of Peterborough, who have produced some really good uh, youth prospects recently. And Swindon, again, another team who actually produced some really good uh, regens and youth prospects across the years. All the way down in League 2 after 10 years. But now it's time we move forward 50 more years, meaning that we go 60 whole seasons into the future. And this is where you need to get your finger hovering over that like button because I'm about to blow your mind. Now to start off with, we look at the Premier League. Things haven't changed too much. There's a few former Premier League teams in there now. Chelsea look like they have dominated the last 10 years. And to be honest, they have managed to do some amazing things. If we look at the past winners, they have gone on an absolute rampage. That's pretty much nine or 10 seasons in a row with Arsenal finishing runners up majority of the time. Manchester United dotted around there, but it does look like Chelsea. They had another run there in the 50s, 2040s to 2050s, where they've won 10 years in a row again. Sheffield United picking up one there. Wolves picking up another. Just splashed around in, in a course of blue of Chelsea and a few uh, Liverpools and Arsenal. Arsenal there picking up again. It's just loads of Chelsea. Tottenham, you finally won a couple of Premier Leagues in 2037 and 2038 was that your first trophy since i beg to differ manchester united and arsenal seemed like they dominated the 30s after what we've seen happen in the 2020s and in an fa cup final which hasn't happened yet between manchester united and arsenal that is going to disrupt chelsea's legacy again because they have continued to do a lot of cup wins as well and we go back throughout the years and they have won so many i have to scroll up there there we go they have won so many the the blue of chelsea we can see norwich a couple of times winning an fa cup there southampton sheffield united obviously when they've had some really good seasons everton as well there have been some shock results i guess derby county popping up there tottenham you did win an fa cup in 2031 before that premier league congratulations but that is not what i am here to shock you with still it's not this just just be patient it's coming i promise now if we look at the champions league we barely see any english teams around at all chelsea sometimes finish runners up but only once was the Champions League won by an English team. Again, it was Chelsea in 2048-49. They literally have not had an English winner this whole time other than that once since this whole simulation started. The Europa League, however, has had a few English winners. Manchester United being the most recent one of those winners. Chelsea again. We have Celtic. I mean, we haven't touched Celtic, but they are there. We've had a few uh, runners-up as well. Arsenal, Liverpool. We go down the line. There's a couple of Arsenal wins there. Chelsea again in the 40s and in the 30s. Arsenal in the 30s as well. Manchester United in the 20s. Not as many as you probably expect if they had the ability to sign their own players. No players, just the youth team somebody who was able to sign some players though is my german team eintracht frankfurt and they won it in 2072 73 and i've never been so proud if we quickly look at the premier league's best players footballer of the year we can see a few arsenal players here a lot that i mean this chelsea guy won it almost every single year he's 37 now he can't play no more but he must have been amazing in his time a guy called ed spice is winning it recently and he looks great but if we go down the line again it is dominated by the same teams that we have seen win the league and it seems like the current manager of chelsea who was only ever a player for AFC Wimbledon, is the guy who has managed to just turn Chelsea into a world-beating team. As we can see here, he has won so many managers of the year of the Premier League. Eduardo Camavinga, though, was the manager of Arsenal, and he won two managers player as well in 2071 at the age of 68. Eduardo Camavinga, who at the time of recording this is like 17. It is amazing that he has won it a few times going down the list. 
again, they're at Arsenal. Uh, Chelsea have had some amazing... They've had Frank Lampard back. How amazing is that? Frank Lampard won manager's player at the age of 71. Pochettino back at Tottenham. Still, I'm not ready to shock you yet. It will get better, I promise. Mikel Arteta. Hmm... People do not see that happening recently. Frank Lampard at Manchester United, anyone? But this, this is where I shock you. Now get yourself prepared to press that like button. Because if we look at the history of the Premier League and we look at records, Chelsea have won the Premier League 37 times. You might think that is quite amazing. That is quite astonishing. But do you know what the most astonishing thing on this page is? If we go down to the fewest league wins in a season, Manchester City in 64-65 had zero wins in the Premier League. Zero wins. They had the most defeats with 35 as well and I just have to look at this because it's music to my eyes as a Manchester United fan. And here it is in all its glory, Manchester City with zero wins, three draws and 35 losses, picking up only three points the whole season. <laughs> it's amazing to see. You just cannot picture that. That in this time, and they still produce good regens, don't they? In every game that I ever play, but not in this year. No way near. This is astonishing. Make sure that like button is pressed. Now, being that England obviously have a transfer ban on all of their teams, I thought this would probably benefit the national team because all of the national players would then be played quite often at their teams, meaning that they are more likely to reach their full potential. And then I looked at the past winners of the World Cup and it just hasn't happened. They've never won it. They've only ever become runners up once to Portugal in 2070, but somehow Scotland have won it in 2046. So somehow the Scottish have overwhelmed us and managed to win a World Cup. They now have the same amount of World Cup wins as England do. That's that's also quite shocking. However, though, we have dominated the European Championship the last three tournaments across the last nine years. So that's a bonus, I guess. And we also won it in 2040. So take that, Scotland. Now let's take a look at how we have been doing in the Championship downwards. My team, Plymouth Argyle, are in the playoff final, by the way. Maybe I should have come back to see if they are going to reach that. They have reached the Premier League twice beforehand in the most recent years, so it's not too much of a, of a scary situation here. But they are in the playoff final. Let's take a look at the leagues downwards. Manchester City are the current champions of the championship. So they're making their way back up to the Premier League. Sky Bet League 1 looks like this. Portsmouth there, Sheffield Wednesday, a few big teams. Sunderland still knocking around. And Sky Bet League 2 looks like... Like this, Leicester are getting promoted from Skybet League 2. That's quite astonishing. So there we have it. What do you make of this random simulation? Do you see this as a realistic thing if we take in consideration your simulations uh, or your save game files? Do you always see the best players come through Chelsea, Arsenal, those type of teams? And do you think Manchester City are likely of that ever happening in the future? Because I personally don't. Make sure you hit the like button, 500 likes, of course, and we'll do another experiment. And we are en route to 20,000 subscribers so if you can hit that subscribe button i would very much appreciate it guys i'll see you very soon thank you very much bye bye